Currently, we have an application that gets user information from an AWS Cognito user pool with the security tokens. I did that in a video a while back. Let's go ahead and hit login. Boom, we got security tokens, we got an ID, access, refresh, all the typical ones. But this is a far cry from locking down our AWS API gateway and then using those tokens to get the data. So let's do that today. I am in my AWS console and the first thing I wanna do is go to my API gateway and create an authorizer. Let's go ahead and do that. And I have two API gateways. This one here, Bigfoot Hunter no auth, I'm gonna to have to change that. I'm gonna put an authorizer on that. So I selected it. And now I'm gonna go down to, on this left side, authorizers. And then I'm gonna create a new authorizer. Sweet. Let's give our authorizer a name. I might call it something like Bigfoot YouTube one right because we might do a few of these let's say we're going to authorize from cognito for the type and then i need the user pool ah oh, look at that i got a user pool i'm going to do bigfoot users we created a user pool in another video so token source we are just going to write authorization make sure you spell it right authorization now let's hit create. There we go. And let's test it, right? So we'll go ahead and test it. And what we need to do is put our access ID JWT token in here. Well, we logged into our application not too long ago. Let's go ahead and inspect the console to see if those tokens are still valid. I'm gonna right click, go down to inspect. And I'm gonna go to application, and then local storage, and then I got my website right here. We have our ID token. This is what we want. You might be tempted to do access token, do ID token. Click this. This is a JWT token, it's huge, right? And you could read about them. I'm not gonna go into it. Let me see if I can copy it. I'll do a control C. Let's go back to our AWS API gateway. I'm going to select my empty box here for the token, do a paste. And I know this is really big, you can't see most of it. Then hit test. Look at that. We got some cool stuff going on. That is a response code of 200. Oh, it's looking good. It's looking like we're going to be able to lock this thing down with this authorizer. So let's continue on. Let's go to our Bigfoot Hunter no auth resources. And then under the sightings get method, we are gonna to go to our method request, click on that, and then look for something that says authorization. Now, it takes a minute or two for this to update. So you might not see your authorizer right away. Like I don't see it right now. We're just gonna go ahead and do a refresh and go back into method request. Ah, look at that. Bigfoot YouTube one. And that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, save this off. We'll just hit this little check box. We're good to go. We can go back now. Let's go ahead and go to actions, deploy API, and we'll still use dev deploy. All right, and in dev, under sightings, under the get, we're gonna make sure that this hasn't changed. Let's just go ahead and copy it. I changed stuff around a lot in between videos. So grab that URL. Now we're gonna go back to our website, our VS code, and make sure we have the headers that is gonna allow us to access our sightings. As a quick test, Let's see if we can get more sightings data. So I'm gonna to go to the home component. There we go. Oh, I gotta log back in. I'll pause the video, I'll log back in. There we go, I'll hit the log in. Good, let's take a look at sightings. Sightings work, are we getting any data? Oh, we're not getting data. It says we're being blocked by cores. 
we're not actually being blocked by cores. And there's something we can do to, act, to get the proper um, error back, but I wanna push on to get through our authorization. All right, let's go over and take a look at our Visual Studio code. We wanna to go to the citing service. That's where we make our HTTP call. And I'm gonna create a header. So under this HTTP client, I'll do a comma HTTP headers. And then down here in the call where we actually talk to the API gateway, or we make the call to the API gateway, do this constant header equals new HTTP, not S, headers, open parenthesis, open curly bracket. Let's put some header data in here. I'll put a content type, content type, and semicolon outside that speech quote, application slash JSON. All right, and this is the important part. Let me hit escape so you can see what I got so far. We need to have authorization. Make sure you spell it right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a token here. You're like, what's in that token? We didn't do anything with that. That's all right, we'll get to that. Put a semicolon here. We're gonna have to pass a token in right here. Retrieve all sightings. I'm gonna say token colon any. Also, Let's not forget we have to add that header to our call. Oh, it's right at the end there too. So I got right at the end. Here, let's just do this. I'm gonna do a comma and I'll go to the next line. Curly bracket, headers, colon, and then put your header there. This header goes right there. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's go on over to our sightings component. So we're gonna get the token from the Cognito service. Let's add the Cognito service to the constructor. I'll just put it on the second line here. Private Cognito service colon. And there we go, Cognito service. That looks good. In that Cognito service, we can get our token. Let's go down to our on a net. And I'll do a this dot Cognito service get current session. Oh man, we're gonna have to get the current session. Don't worry, it's easy. Let's go to our Cognito service. And down at the bottom, I'm just gonna add a current session. I'll say public uh, get current session. Get current session, open and close. We'll go ahead and return a promise. Promise any, and then open curly bracket, return off current session. All right, now let's go back to our sightings component. Get current session is good. Let's see, did I put a token in here? Oh yeah, we don't have the token yet. We'll do a then open parenthesis response. I'll just do resp because we have a response there, right? And then I'll do a thick arrow, open curly bracket. Ooh, let token equal res. This is a tricky part. Get ID token. You're going to be tempted to get the access, uh, the, the get ID access or get access ID. Get ID token, that's the one you want. And we want the JWT. So get JWT token. There we go. Now this part right here, we'll just do a control X to cut it, we'll just paste it underneath. And then in the retrieve all sightings, we can supply the token. Let's go ahead and save everything and test this out. Save all, I'll just shrink this down. 
And we've got our website. Let's go ahead and log in. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Syntech Gamer 7 at Proton.me. Get my password in here. Log in. Cool. Let's go to our sightings data. Boom. Look at that. Sightings. Let's open it up. I'm going to pull this up. Just in case you can't see it. So we got the data from our Lambda through the AWS API gateway that now has an authorizer using our Cognito data, our Cognito user pool. That's pretty cool. We need to do interceptors now so that we don't have to manually add the header. 